a system of two linear equations of two variables using graphing. So we're solving a system, in this case two, linear equations, those are lines, of two variables. And we're using x and y today, but you really could use any two different variables. And we're going to use graphing in order to do this. Now graphing is not my favorite way to solve a system of two equations mostly because it requires a lot of precision, and if you get a fractional answer, it's really difficult to tell on a graph. It is possible to do, though, with, with very precise graphs, and in easy sort of cases like this. It also works well as a check for some of the other ways to solve a system of two linear equations. So if we have our line, y equals 2x plus 3, that gives us infinite solutions. Lines go on forever in both directions, and infinite amount of coordinate points fulfill this requirement right here. It's got infinite solutions. If we have another line, y equals negative x minus 3, this also has infinite solutions. This goes on forever in both directions. Infinite amount of coordinate points work for this. Now the question is, is there a coordinate point that works for both of these equations, that will satisfy both of them, make them both true? Well, there are three different possibilities when we have two lines. The first one is it has one solution. The lines cross, and there's one coordinate point that works for both of them. There can't be any more than one. The lines don't curve back around and cross again. So there's one right here if the lines cross and they're not the same line. We also have the possibility of having no solutions. These lines are parallel to each other. They will never touch each other. There's not one coordinate point that will work for both this line and this line at the same time because they never touch. The other option is they're multiples of each other. So the lines are actually the same line. When you multiply something with infinite solutions, it's also going to just go right on with that other line. So they're multiples of each other. These lines have infinitely many solutions. All of the coordinate points that work for one line will also work for the other line. Let's take a look at some examples. So if we have the line y equals 2x plus 3, we can graph that, and I'm going to graph it using two coordinate points. I'm going to choose a value for x, and I like to choose 0. So I put in a 0 for x, and I have 2 times 0, which is 0, plus 3, and I get out a 3 for y. So my coordinate point is 0, 3, and I'm going to graph that, 0 on the x-axis, up 3 on the y-axis. And now I'm going to choose another value for x, and I'm going to choose negative 4. It's just a little ways away from 0. That'll help me graph my line. So negative 4, 2 times negative 4 is going to give me a negative 8. Negative 8 plus 3 gives me a negative 5. So I go over to negative 4 on the x-axis and go down to negative 5 on the y-axis, and I go ahead and plot my point. Now I can take a straight edge and connect those points, and now I have my line. All of these solutions in this line will fit this equation right here. They'll make this equation true. Now I'm going to graph my second line, y equals negative x minus 3. I'm going to choose a 0 for x, like I always like to, and when I put a 0 for x, negative 0 is just 0, minus 3 gives me a 3. I can do the same thing with another value. I chose negative 3. When I put in a negative 3, I have a negative negative 3, which is a positive 3, minus 3, so 3 minus 3 is going to give me a 0. I can plot both of those points, 0 comma negative 3, 0 on the x-axis, down to negative 3 on the y-axis, and negative 3, 0. Negative 3 on the x-axis, 0 on the y-axis, and then I can take a straight edge and connect those two. Now I can see the point where they intersect. That point where they intersect, that point is on both lines. This coordinate point is on both lines. When I put it into these equations, it will make both of the equations true. So I look at my graph, and I use my graph to determine that coordinate point. So if I go over to negative 2 on the x-axis and down to negative 1, I find that that's the place where they intersect. So just by looking at where they intersect, I can find my coordinate point. Now you see why it's a little bit tricky. If you have a fractional point and it's just up a little bit, it's difficult to tell when you're graphing. Now I'm going to go ahead and test that point to make sure that point actually is my point. It's not a little fractional part of it. And so I'm going to take negative 1, I'll put that in for y, and negative 2 and put that in for x in both of my equations. And I expect they will both come out equal. So instead of y right here, I'm going to put my negative 1. And instead of x, I'm going to put negative 2. So I have negative 1 equals 
2 times negative 2, that's 2 times x, plus 3. So when I do the calculations, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 plus 3. And I have negative 1 over here. Negative 1 is equal to negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. So my equation is true for this for this particular line. Now let's take a look at this line. I'm going to put a negative 1 in for my y. That's my negative 1. And I'm going to put in a negative 2 in for my x. So I have a negative, negative 2 here. And then minus 3. So negative 1 equals negative, negative 2 is going to give me a 2. Minus a 3 is negative 1 is equal to negative 1. And that checks out as well. So this coordinate point makes both of these linear equations true. Let's look at another example. Here's an example that a lot of students get a little bit confused about because notice each one of these just has one variable. And these are a horizontal and a vertical line. So we have a vertical line here and a horizontal line here. Now, if you didn't recognize that, you could, you could actually just graph this. You could choose some points. You have to take into account that you really have zero y here. So whatever y is, you're multiplying it by zero x is always equal to 5. If you have a t chart, there are going to be 5's all the way down here. x can't be anything else but 5. So when x equals 5, for anything, y equals 0, x equals 5. y equals 5, x equals 5. y equals anything, and x is going to be 5. So we can actually graph these points. We can graph the point 5 comma 0, so go over 5, 0, 5 comma 5, 5, and up 5 on our y, and we've got our line. This is a nice vertical line here. Now if we look at y equals negative 2, same thing. y is always going to be negative 2, no matter what x is. I could choose any value for x, and y is going to be negative 2. If it helps you, you could even write a 0x plus y here. At x equals 0, y equals negative 2. At x equals negative 3, y is also equal to negative 2. So I could plot those points. I have a nice horizontal line. And I can look at the point of intersection. The point of intersection has to be where x is 5, because x is always 5. And y is negative 2, because y is always negative 2. So you can look at that, find that point, and you can go ahead and double check this. This point, if we plug it in for x, is 5, and that's equal to 5. Negative 2 in for y, and that's equal to negative 2. Let's look at y equals 2x plus 3, and y equals 2x minus 5. So we're going to go ahead and choose some values for x. We're going to choose 0 for x. When we put a 0 in for x, we have 2 times 0 plus 3. So that's 0 plus 3, and we have a 3. And we're going to choose a negative 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 3 is going to give me negative 1. Now I have two coordinate points. I can connect them with a straight edge, and I will have a line. So the point 0, comma 3, I'm going to go ahead and graph that. 0 on the x-axis, up 3 on the y-axis. Negative 2, comma negative 1. Negative 2 on the x-axis, and then down to negative 1 on the y-axis. I've got my line, and I use a straight edge to connect those two points. If I wanted to come up with a third point, just to check to make sure that's correct, I could do that as well. And then we have the equation y equals 2x minus 5. Again, I'm going to choose some values for x and see what y equals. I'm going to choose 0 for x. When I put a 0 in for x, I have 2 times 0 minus 5, and that's going to give me a negative 5. 0 minus 5 is negative 5. I'm going to choose a 2 for my x, and 2 times 2 is going to give me a 4. Minus 5 is going to give me a negative 1. And I'm going to go ahead and graph those points. So 0 comma negative 5, 0 on the x-axis, down 5 on the y-axis, and I have my point 0 comma negative 5. And then I have the point 2 comma negative 1, and I'm going to go over 2 on the x-axis and down to negative 1 on the y-axis, connect those with a straight edge, and it looks very parallel here. Another problem with graphing is you can't really tell just by looking at them that these lines are never, ever going to cross. We'll talk about ways to do that a little bit later, but for our graphing sake, if we could look on forever and ever, these lines will never cross and they have no solution. So this would be a good check for something that you have come up with for no solution, just doing a graphing check. Okay, let's look at another example. And it's our last example. You can probably guess what our answer is going to be to this one. 
So we have y equals 3x plus 1 and 2y minus 6x equals 2. Notice our linear equation is written a little bit differently here. We don't have it set so that it's a y equals. This is still a linear equation. We have x and y to the first power. And we're going to go ahead and graph this using our coordinate points again. So if we put in a 0 for x right here, 3 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is going to give us a 1. And let's plug in a negative 2 for x. If we put in a negative 2 for x, we have 3 times a negative 2, which is negative 6 plus 1. And that's going to give me a negative 5. So I have the point 0, 1 and negative 2, negative 5. Let's take a look at this linear equation. Now, solving for one of these variables is going to be a little bit more difficult. And so when I'm doing this, I am actually have some work over here off to the side. So I'm going to choose a 0, zero for x. I'm going to plug in a 0 right there. So I would have 2y minus 0 equals 2, which is the same thing as 2y equals 2. Divide both sides by 2, and I get a y is equal to 1. Now let's choose another value. Let's choose 2. Plug in a 2 for x over here, so a 2 for x. I have 2y minus 6 times 2. 6 times 2 is 12, equals 2. So then I have 2y minus 12 is equal to 2. To solve this, I'm going to add 12 to both sides. And when I add 12 to both sides, I have a 2y is equal to 2 plus 12 is 14. Divide both sides by 2, and I have a y equals 7. So now I have my coordinate points. If I look at this, I see a matching one. And I think, oh, well, maybe I found the one place where those lines cross. But when you graph them, 0, 1 here for both this equation and this equation, negative 2, negative 5 for my red equation over here, and then I have 2, 7 for this equation up here, and I notice that they all connect, all three points connect in a straight line. That means that these lines are multiples of each other, and they have infinitely many solutions. Now let's just take a look at this equation right here and kind of see why. So if I have 2y minus 6x equals 2, and I divide everything in there by 2, 2y divided by 2 is y, negative 6x divided by 2 is negative 3x, 2 divided by 2 is 1, and then if I add 3x to both sides, I have y equals 3x plus 1. So plus 3x here gives me a 0, and then 3x plus 1. And that's exactly the same as this equation. So this equation right here, our original equation, is really just twice this equation, which means they're the same line.